I will not forget one line of this. Not one day. I swear. I will always remember when the Doctor was me. Welcome back to Crawford Clark Close-Up Season of Doctor Who Reviews and Rankings. We're reliving every Doctor Who story from the canon since the series returned to the BBC back in 2005. We've enjoyed ten series, a host of specials, and four different Doctors so far, with the fifth, Doctor number 13, Jodie Whittaker, debuting on the BBC this autumn. We've got Peter Capaldi's adventures in the TARDIS still to rank, which will be coming next month, but first we're going back to 2009, when fan favourite David Tennant made the shock announcement that he was hanging up the TARDIS keys to make way for his successor. Following Tennant's extraordinarily successful run as the Doctor from his brief appearance in June 2005, all the way up to his explosive regeneration on January 1st 2010, he was probably the most beloved incarnation of the Time Lord since Tom Baker in the 1970s. It was time for Eleven's Hour though, and fans of the show were shocked to discover that the producers were not only handing over the reins to the youngest Doctor of them all to date, the at the time of filming 27-year-old relative newcomer Matt Smith, but also that the showrunner who was responsible for the vision of Doctor Who since its revival, Russell T Davies, was handing over to previous episode writer Stephen Moffat to see the show forward. Matt Smith made his debut in The End of Time Part 2 on January the 1st, 2010. As Tennant regenerated, Smith took his place, remarking that he had long hair like a girl and was unfortunately still not ginger. He was also quick to realise that he was crashing in the exploding TARDIS. It was the most explosive entrance for a new incarnation of the Time Lord to date, and Smith returned with the quite brilliant Series 5, debuting on the 3rd of April, 2010. Fans of the show would soon rejoice and find it hard to argue against Smith's debut full episode, The Eleventh Hour, being one of the very best post-regeneration episodes in the entire canon. Smith was instantly engaging as the titular hero of the show's title, befriending young Amelia Pond and making mistakes along the way, but by the end of the episode, showing that he's still the old Time Lord that we've come to know and love. Matt Smith was also the fortunate incumbent of the TARDIS when the show was celebrating its 50th anniversary back in November 2013. He was coming to the end of his run as the Doctor, but was guaranteed to go out with a bang in some special episodes following the end of Series 7. Matt Smith bowed out from the TARDIS on Christmas Day 2013 in the thrilling The Time of the Doctor, a culmination of the series' 50th anniversary celebrations and a fitting end to this Doctor's reign. For this reviewer, despite adoring David Tennant's portrayal of the character, it was with Matt Smith that I fully embraced New Who, and I'm ashamed to say that I'm yet to go back and relive the classic Who episodes. It's definitely on the radar, though. Under showrunner Stephen Moffat's direction, the Matt Smith era maintained the fantastical elements of Who, but weaved in more nuanced writing and story arcs that kept fans guessing from one moment to the next. There were cliffhangers, huge reveals, and you really got the sense with Matt's Doctor that he was genuinely an old man taking up the body of one much younger than his years. The Matt Smith era encompassed three full series and four Christmas specials, and his work on the 50th anniversary special The Day of the Doctor, which will get its own separate review, so he ranked up an impressive run of 44 full episodes, not including here the episode preview shorts, or his brief appearance in Peter Capaldi's first episode, or indeed his cameo, spoiler alert, in the 50th year's monumental and adventure in space and time drama. Matt Smith regenerated into Peter Capaldi at the end of The Time of the Doctor on December the 25th, 2013. As you'll be aware if you've seen the reviews of the Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant eras of Who already, for each of our reviews of the New, Doctor, New Who Doctor's tenures, we'll be ranking their top five episodes, and also showcasing some of the weakest efforts from each Doctor. A reminder once again that an Adventure in Space and Time and The Day of the Doctor, the two 50th anniversary specials, will be getting their own separate reviews this month. So, as Matt's Doctor would say, Geronimo! Let's get started. First up on our list is Series 6, Episode 10's The Girl Who Waited at number 5. If you're looking for an emotional, engaging 45 minutes of Who with some of Karen Gillan's very best acting as companion Amy Pond, look no further than this late Series 6 story. 
The Doctor, Amy, and Rory are trapped in a quarantine where a plague could wipe out the Doctor in minutes were he to be exposed to it. Time goes quicker for Amy, who becomes separated from the Doctor and Rory, and when Rory is reunited with his wife, there are two versions, the current one and the one who has become a warrior, having spent 36 years on her own. The episode is at once beautifully written, particularly in the latter half, and ultimately devastating. A solid episode all round, and one of the most mature of the Matt Smith era. At number four, we go back to the stellar series five, Matt's premiere season as the Doctor, with the brilliantly atmospheric first two-parter of his run, episodes four and five, The Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone. We're reintroduced here to Alex Kingston's Fantastic River Song, who we saw once before in the epic Silence in the Library from the David Tennant era, and also back are the eerie Weeping Angels after their first appearance in Series 3's Blink. Matt Smith is on brilliant form both as hero and protector of Amy in this belter of a two-parter. In third place, this is where things get very tricky, and some people are bound to be disappointed but bear with us. It's Series 7, Episode 5, The Angels Take Manhattan. How could you have a Matt Smith ranking and not include the episode in which one of the longest-running set of companions from New Who bows out from the show? This is another satisfyingly twisty and emotional episode from the pen of showrunner Stephen Moffat, as the Doctor, Amy, Rory and River are being pursued once again by the Weeping Angels in Manhattan. Not only is the episode tense and, at times, uncommonly dark for Doctor Who, it's most importantly a perfect send-off for Amy and Rory in one of Matt Smith's best episodes. Whether you liked Amy Pond as a companion or not, if you don't have a single tear when you see little Amy Pond's face at the end of the episode as Karen Gillan marks her departure from the series, we'll be surprised. In second place, it's another story featuring River Song from Matt Smith's era. Seriously, she's the best. From Series 6, it's Episode 7, which broke the series in two and left audiences' mouths agape at the brilliant cliffhanger. A Good Man Goes to War is certainly one of the strongest episodes of New Who, which sees Amy give birth to Melody Pond, Rory and the Doctor storm the base to rescue Amy, and the enigmatic River Song finally reveals who she really is. Brilliantly written and constructed by showrunner Stephen Moffat, everyone delivers their A-game in this killer episode. So that means we've made it to our number one Matt Smith era episode. Before we reveal it, many fans are going to be shocked that the following honourable mentions didn't make the top five. It just goes to show that Matt Smith's era of Doctor Who has many brilliant stories. The first honourable mention is Matt's first episode as the Doctor, Series 5, Episode 1's The Eleventh Hour, which is widely considered one of the best ever post-regeneration episodes in all of Who. And who are we to argue? Next up is Series 5, Episode 10's outstanding Vincent and the Doctor, narrowly missing out on the top five. The emotional impact achieved at the end of this episode is fantastic. The next one might divide people. It's the Christmas special from the end of Series 5, A Christmas Carol, which, in our opinion, is one of the best Christmas specials in Who history. There are plenty of honourable mentions, but whilst everyone raves about The Doctor's Wife from Series 6, despite its sweet finale, I just don't get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so at number one, it has to be the closing two-parter of Series 5, Episodes 12 and 13, The Pandorica Opens and The Big Bang. Not only was I thrilled in my own personal way that there were so many references to my own birthday, the 26th of June, in this episode, given that it's the day of the Big Bang and also Amy and Rory's imminent wedding, that aside, this is one of the very best series finales in all of New Who. It's ingenious, ingeniously written by Stephen Moffat, see, I can't even speak, with enough twists and turns and hurrahs to keep even the pessimistic Who fans smiling. Furthermore, the episode caps off one of the strongest series of Doctor Who since its revival back in 2005. So, there you have it. A controversial list, perhaps, but every Who fan is going to have different ideas of their favourites and least favourites for each Doctor, and these are ours. Before we sign off from Matt Smith's time as the Doctor, there have been a few episodes from his run that just didn't hit the mark. Our dishonourable mentions include... 
Series 7, Episode 2, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. It's a clunky filler episode with some poor CGI and actually some lazy writing. Series 7, Episode 12, Nightmare in Silver. The less said about the two irritating kids that Clara is looking after being allowed into the TARDIS on this adventure, the better. And also the 2011 Christmas special, The Doctor, The Widow and The Wardrobe, was far too schmaltzy, even by Moffat's sentimental standards, with a lot of wooden, see what we did there, performances throughout. For many fans, Matt Smith is their Doctor from New Who. He was quirky, had impeccable dress sense, and brought the fez and the bow tie, and even braces, back into fashion. At times he was a no-nonsense doctor, but he always knew how to let his hair down and to respect his companions. Clearly Stephen Moffat struggled parting company with Matt, the first doctor under his wing as series showrunner, as he would appear in a cameo at the end of Deep Breath, the first episode of the Peter Capaldi run. And it's to Peter Capaldi we come to next month in the last of our New Who Doctor retrospectives, before Doctor No. 13 Jodie Whittaker takes to the TARDIS this autumn. Be sure to stay tuned to the channel for our ranking of the Capaldi era this October. Before that, as promised, we'll have individual reviews of the show's 50th anniversary highlights, The Day of the Doctor, and the Mark Gatiss penned An Adventure in Space and Time. Be on the lookout for those coming shortly. For now, though, don't forget to subscribe to Crawford Clark Close Up so you never miss a new video. You can also find Crawford Clark Close Up on Facebook and Twitter, and you can drop us an email with your suggestions for the channel. It's Crawford Clark Close Up at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and until next time, that's a wrap.